It's something most of us will never understand, that sense of grief and anger when a loved one's life is taken at the hands of another. For Janine Balding's family, the only small sense of justice is knowing her killers are in jail. But soon, that could change. The semi-naked body of Janine Balding was found in a shallow dam early Saturday morning. A sad little boy sitting next to his dad outside a court of law. It's, uh, it's pretty much been my life ever since. 36 long years of heartache. The family just needs to be left alone. It just doesn't seem to end. For David Balding, it's an ongoing nightmare. I thought this was all uh, put to bed a few years ago, actually. But to have it brought up again, it's a bit uh, ridiculous, actually. David was just 10 years old when his sister, bank clerk Janine Balding, was raped and murdered by a gang of five street kids after being abducted outside a Sydney railway station. It was 1988. 16-year-old Matthew James Elliott, Bronson Matthew Blessington, 14, Wayne Lindsay Wilmot and Carol Ann Arrow, both 15, were convicted. The gang's ringleader was then 22-year-old Stephen Wayne Jamison, also known as Shorty. They're just scum. That's pretty much all you can say. Can you imagine the terror of being in the back of that car being raped. This one in particular um, was something that, that still haunts me, uh, uh, this case, to, to see the, the evilness that was in, inflicted upon this poor young girl. Former Detective Chief Inspector Russell Oxford investigated hundreds of murders. We should never forget what happened to this poor girl, the horror and the terror that she would have been through. Beverly and Kerry Balding never gave up the fight to keep their daughter's killers behind bars. Both have since died. I made a promise to the family that someone would continue to speak up for Janine. Now, the New South Wales Supreme Court is considering if a new inquiry should be held about whether DNA evidence may create doubt about Stephen Shorty Jamison's guilt. The case was raised in court where former Upper House MP and lawyer Peter Breen suggested DNA found on a bandana at the scene could belong to someone else. Yes, yeah, so we've had trial and mistrial, aborted trial and another trial and found guilty and appeals and other appeals. There's nothing new in this, nothing new at all. We've got the killers. They're, they're in jail for the rest of their lives and that's where they belong and that's where they should remain. Peter Breen has campaigned for Jamison's freedom and claims he may have been mistaken for a man by the name of Mark Wells, who was also known as Shorty. It's been before six Supreme Court judges have reviewed this case. Russell Oxford maintains the mistaken identity issue has been examined and discounted by numerous courts and inquiries. And the scrutiny that this investigation was under, we went through two murder trials, we went through the Court of Criminal Appeal, they appealed to the High Court, and after all of that, to still say that there's a massive injustice being done, I was incensed, absolutely incensed. Author and journalist Janet Fife Yeomans has followed the case from the beginning. I've always hated injustices. The thing about this case is not, it, well, from what happened to Janine was awful, but they caught the people who did it. The case has been repeatedly challenged all the way to Australia's High Court and the convictions stood. Even Murray Gleeson, who went on to become the Chief Justice of Australia, described it as a tissue of lies, the claims that it was Shorty Wells who was there and not Shorty Jamison. So how do you see this ending? Perhaps we do need an inquiry just to prove that Shorty Jamison was the Shorty there and that it wasn't Shorty Wells. Then perhaps Peter Breen will just give up. Janet wrote a book with Janine's mother. 
Oh, I made the mistake of seeing some of the photographs as well of Janine when they found her lying in the shallow dam. Images she can't forget. I wish I'd never seen that picture. It's got to end. It's got to finish. It, yeah, they argue for clemency and mercy. Where was the clemency and mercy to Janine Balding in all of this? David Balding is now a father of two. He doesn't want his sister's killers ever freed. They think they've been there long enough, but they shouldn't, they shouldn't be breathing, really. He just wants the nightmare to end. It just keeps popping up. It should all be put to rest now. There's no doubt that they got the right people. Yeah, 36 years of that pain, and surely it's time we let Janine rest in peace and allow her family to heal. For the record, we reached out to Peter Breen for comment, but he didn't respond.